ONTV recognized its volunteer producers with dinner and an evening of bocce ball during their annual appreciation banquet. Canterbury Village provided the setting for the annual walk for warmth fundraiser, benefiting families in need of assistance. Free Comic Book Day and Star Wars Day happened to fall on the same day, and local families had their choice of fun events to attend. And the Chamber of Commerce helped one local restaurant celebrate their one-year anniversary despite facing challenges on the shores of Lake Orion. Hello, I'm Lexi McKinney. And I'm Stacey Calloway. We'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. Throughout the year, ONTV offers video production classes to members of the community and provides the equipment and facilities to allow producers to create their own programs and podcasts. Recently, ONTV hosted an annual event to recognize these producers and the programs they create. On the evening of Friday, April 26th, ONTV hosted its annual volunteer appreciation banquet at Palazzo de Bacci in Orion Township. Dozens of volunteers were treated to a nice Italian dinner and an evening of bocce ball. Many people may not know that ONTV is a nonprofit organization funded by cable TV revenue collected by Orion Township and the village of Lake Orion and is dependent on its volunteer producers and crew members. Without our volunteers, ONTV would just uh, kind of be dead. It would be boring. It wouldn't be the vibrant center it is uh, at the center of our community. So uh, we love our volunteers. We have volunteers from ages 12 on up to uh, over 80. The, 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 our older volunteers don't want to share their ages with us, but they're over 80 and we all come together uh, for the love of making shows, having fun, learning something new, and just kind of engaging with the community in a different way. Several volunteers and producers were recognized for their accomplishments in 2023 during an award ceremony. Receiving the Podcast of the Year Award was Sammy Taramina, who has produced approximately 300 episodes of his podcast called OAA Now over a 10-year period. You know, winning this award for me was really gratifying. I mean, because, like, you know, it's, it's, this is my show. You know, this is what we talk about throughout from Oxford to Harper Woods. I mean, like, you know, it's, it's his podcast devoted to the um, to high school sports in the OAA. Receiving the Spirit of Public Access Award was Andrew Walker, who has been producing his variety show, Motor City Mirth, since June of 2023. Absolutely was not uh, expecting this at all. Uh, a couple years ago, I won Podcast of the Year Award, which was uh, very exciting. Uh, I didn't had no idea that I would ever win anything again uh, at, on TV, but it was a welcome, welcome surprise. I feel honored, um, and uh, I'm grateful for everyone who voted for me. Thank you for uh, all the cast and crew who have come on my show the last year and a half, um, who helped put it together. Couldn't have done it without uh, those people. Named Volunteer of the Year was Jim Roback, who also won the award back in 2017. Jim volunteers his time to operate a studio camera for many productions and has even been a guest on several ONTV programs. Oh, I really enjoy, you know, the people down there are just so fantastic. They're so accommodating. Uh, it's a great family there. I mean, everybody works together and it's enjoyable with those kind of people. You know, it makes you feel like you're contributing to the community and to the on TV. And this is what we're all about, you know, is the community. And the more we can do for the community, I think that's important. And if we don't do it, then who's going to do it? So I got the time. I'm retired. I've been retired for 15 years. So why not? And named producers of the year were Jason Klaus and Quadell Edwards, who produced and hosted the Klaus and Q show from February 2022 to February 2024. Jason and Quadell weren't able to attend the event, but we surprised them in the studio during their live broadcast on May 3rd. That definitely caught us <laughs> off guard, but we do thank you guys. We thank this network. I mean, Joe has been nothing but great to us you know this whole experience has been you know a awesome awesome experience and we just we just want to impact 
people. You know, we want to impact people. We want to help people, and we want people to be entertained and help people be better. We are privileged to have an opportunity to do this, you know, regardless of what the genre is, you know. My involvement, my personal involvement with ONTV goes back to like 2006. You know, I've spent a lot of time in a number of you know different genres working with the amazing people here at ONTV and the support that uh, they have shown us throughout the years, throughout all of our crazy ideas and endeavors, they they entertain that. And in turn, it's given a lot of people a platform to live their dreams. If you're interested in volunteering your time or producing your very own show, be sure to give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org. Oakland Livingston Human Services Agency, or OLSA, was formed in 1964 as part of President Johnson's War on Poverty. OLSA supports Oakland and Livingston County residents in need of assistance. Recently, Genesis Credit Union hosted an event to help OLSA in their mission. On the morning of Saturday, May 4th, approximately 500 people gathered on the grounds of Canterbury Village for Genesis Credit Union's annual Walk for Warmth. The day started off with music and speeches, then the participants gathered for a ribbon-cutting ceremony to launch the start of the walk. We raised, I think, close to $30,000 okay. for this organization. Yeah. Every year? Every year, and oh, wow. every year it just keeps increasing. And the donations are coming from our staff. We do some internal fun things. And then it's also coming from our members at the branches. I would say thank you. Thank you for giving up your time because, you know, they have lots of options and uh, they take time away from their family sometimes. We have a lot of employees who are working today that want to be here but can't be here but have, have contributed all year round to this cause. So just thanks to everybody. What can you say about this venue, this layout? Uh, I can, I'll actually talk about that. So this venue has actually been uh, a huge gift to this event and to this organization. They actually donate the, the property, um, no charge to the organization. So all the money that's raised is actually being raised to go back to helping individuals. They're not, they're not paying for a venue. So that's been fantastic. OLSA is headquartered in Pontiac and partners with community members and local organizations to serve the community. In 2023, OLSA provided support for almost 10,000 people in Oakland and Livingston. It means a lot to us. Um, you know, the, the funds that we get from the event are wonderful, but the camaraderie, having all of our partners out here, that's the most special thing to us. The fact that we know that our partners care not only with their finances, but also with their time and coming out and celebrating the work that we do means a lot to us. Um, so the, those funds go directly into assisting clients. There, none of those funds are used for any of our administrative or support needs. They all go directly to helping people with their heat-related emergencies, like utility. They may need you know, propane in some of our areas. Um, it might even be just a winter coat for kids. So it's all types of things that are related to heat-related emergencies. I'm walking with this charity, and I'm walking for my company, and I'm hoping If you or someone you know needs heat-related assistance, you can call 248-209-2600 or visit olsa.org to schedule an appointment. The vision for an arts and cultural center in North Oakland County began in 1979 when a group of artists, including Joan Brace, joined forces. The Orion Arts Center opened its doors in 1981 and has been providing access to creative experiences ever since. On the evening of Thursday, April 25th, the Orion Art Center hosted an opening reception for their annual scholarship show. Graduating seniors in Oakland County were invited to submit up to three pieces of art to be considered for one of three available scholarships. So this year, um, the, the grand prize, whoever scores the highest, we have two different judges that jury it, 
um, and we average those scores. The highest score for that one receives the Joan Brace Scholarship, which is a $1,000 scholarship. So that's the highest one. Um, and then we have a new scholarship this year. Um, it's a $500 scholarship in honor of Vanessa Alessandro Campbell. And she's a Lake Loring High School graduate who um, actually won the Joan Brace Scholarship, I believe, in 2003. Um, so we're honoring her memory through that scholarship. And that one specifically goes to a Lake Loring graduate. So that's the $500 scholarship. And then we have the Anthony Reard Scholarship. That's a $500 scholarship that would go to the runner-up of the overall show. 19 aspiring artists took advantage of the opportunity and their work was on display throughout the gallery. Director Holly Nicosia announced the names of the winning recipients. Megan Chayasait of the International Academy in Bloomfield Township was awarded the $1,000 Joan Brace Scholarship for her piece called Agony. Winning the $500 Campbell Scholarship was Lake Orion High School senior Emma Chamaro for her piece called Polo Adobo Con Oroz. And awarded the $500 Anthony Reard Scholarship was Isabella Ball of Oxford High School for her elephant watercolor painting. I was surprised. I was very surprised. I didn't, I just kind of did it so that it could get judged and yeah. Talk about what went into that piece. Um, a lot of time, it took me about a month to make because I would go paint for a few hours and then just kind of take a break for a few weeks and just come back and go back and forth between the painting, but it turned out pretty good. We use the same rubric on this show that we use for all of our shows, so we're judging these, um, the kids' artwork the same that a professional artist is being judged with tone, color, um, overall quality, and craftsmanship of the work. Um, the message that you're portraying in your piece is that have a clear idea um, and then the overall aesthetics of the piece. The artwork will continue to be on display at the Art Center through May 20th and will be included in the Art Center's Mystery Art Stroll during the Art and Flower Fair scheduled to take place May 18th and 19th in downtown Lake Orion. For more information visit orionartcenter.org. The 150th running of Kentucky Derby was held on Saturday, May 5th, and it was an exciting one. Mystic Dan literally won by a nose in a three-way photo finish. One local organization took advantage of all the Kentucky Derby excitement by hosting a fundraiser with a horse racing theme. On Thursday, May 2nd, the staff at Camp Oakland hosted their first ever Run for the Roses fundraiser in Metamora. The venue could not be more perfect. The White Horse Inn was originally developed in 1848 as a general store. Two years later, it was turned into an inn and stagecoach stop. Approximately 80 people attended the fundraiser and enjoyed a buffet dinner and took part in raffles. Attendees were also able to bet on pre-recorded horse races. I'm just super grateful um, to have all the support that we do and that everyone came out in their best attire, their best hats, um, one for a good cause and two to have a good time. You know, this is all about the kids. Um, you know, we're a residential facility for youth that have um, gotten in trouble with the law and are asked to come to our um, campus in Oxford to get um, schooling, therapy, counseling and get them back on the right path. So we um, have a girls program, we have a couple boys programs to just give them the skills they need um, so that they can be successful. Founded in 1951, Camp Oakland is located in Oxford and provides a safe environment for at-risk teenagers by offering counseling, therapy, educational aid, and support. Our mission is to give every child a chance. And so this is a way for us to raise some funds to give them the tools, the techniques, the, the things that they need so that they can be successful. So this event, um, with any fundraising event, allows us to put all the funds back into the program, back into doing things for the kids in order to get um, uh, various things. So we have career workshops, we have, you know, a lot of the kids do woodworking, they make uh, tables, they make birdhouses, jewelry, stuff to help rehabilitate them and really um, to be able to provide them a different opportunities that might not have had otherwise. For more information on how you can support Camp Oakland, call 248-628-2561 or visit campoakland.org. Anyone who's driving along M24 through Lake Orion will notice major changes taking place along the shore of the lake. One local restaurant is caught right in the middle of all that new construction, but has somehow made it to its first anniversary. 
On Thursday, May 2nd, representatives of the Chamber of Commerce gathered at Orient Boathouse to help them celebrate their one-year anniversary with a ribbon-cutting ceremony. Um, it's really amazing. Um, we were late to join the chamber. We didn't join it until uh, the first of the year. Um, but um, my wife Kim has been um, involved in attending several of the events, and it's just great to network within um, the community that we're a part of, uh, the other business owners, share ideas, um, try to utilize their services. We want to, um, you know, use additional vendors for the within the community and support them. Um, we've done catering events for them. We've worked with the local high school, the local schools, different uh, clubs and different sports teams and supporting and donating meals to those teams and, um, you know, just really immersing ourselves within the community that we, you know, we belong to. So, Prior to becoming Orion Boathouse, this location was the pediatric office of Dr. Sunil Das for several decades. Since taking over the building, the restaurant has faced a few challenges with new developments going in and along the lake shore. Now, as the restaurant closes in on its first anniversary, diners can enjoy a diverse menu with a spectacular view of the lake. The view is um, like no other in Oakland County, in my opinion. Um, we, you know, to have, to have dinner here or lunch or brunch, uh, we do a yoga sunrise. Um, the sun, there's no better location on the lake than uh, this, this lakefront patio with the sun setting. Um, right across the lake and the fireworks out front and of course dragging on the lake in the fall and just a just a, a blessing to have such a great location um, on the lakefront and and the ability to to dock uh, almost 18 boats so wow we offer carry out obviously by by vehicle also but by boat um, anyone that lives on the lake is obviously welcome to dock their boat as well as people that launch the public launch and want to just come over for a sandwich or a drink or you know just get off the lake for a few minutes to take a look at the menu or to see the restaurant's hours, visit OrionBoathouse.com. You can also find them on Facebook. Free Comic Book Day was created in 2002 by the comic book industry to attract new readers to independent stores. This year, the event happened to fall on Star Wars Day, as in May the 4th be with you. On Saturday, May 4th, the Orion Township Library hosted its annual Fandom Fest. The event is a celebration of comics, anime, movies, TV, basically all things pop culture. Uh, so we've got Bounce and Boogie at 11 a.m. today, which is like a movement-based story time for younger kids. Um, we've also got crafts going on in our meeting room today with snacks and everything like that. Um, all different kinds of fandom-based crafts. And then we're having fandom trivia this afternoon uh, at 1 o'clock. Yeah, we in addition to crafts and activities, visitors were encouraged to take home free comics, some of which were provided by Second and Charles. Well, obviously, um, libraries and fandoms are tied together so closely. You know, we've all got a movie series, TV series, book series that we love, um, and it's available here, and it's a way to draw people into the library with something fun and a little different um, to celebrate the books and media that they love. The next major event scheduled to take place at the library is their annual summer reading kickoff on Saturday, June 8th. Families can celebrate the start of summer with this fun outdoor event. There will be games, activities, food, and entertainment. For more information, visit orionlibrary.org. And finally, Mother's Day falls on Sunday, May 12th this year, and Orion Township Parks and Recreation once again offered residents an opportunity to find that unique gift for mom. On Saturday, May 4th, 31 vendors set up tables throughout the Orient Center to offer a wide variety of one-of-a-kind locally made products. The only requirement that we have is that it has to be handmade locally. I don't want anything mass produced that's printed and created overseas. It's got to be made here locally. What are some of the things being offered here today? Oh, what are some of the things? Uh, you name it, we have it. Um, Quilts, crochet, pottery, jewelry, a little bit of everything here. Although admission and parking were free to the public, vendor fees allowed the township to offer family-friendly events throughout the year. It's not really a fundraiser. Um, the cost that we, or the revenue that we bring in, we offset um, 
generally by the expenses for the program. Um, anything above and beyond goes back into the Parks and Rec Department and offsets costs for things that are free, like summer sizzle, uh, the concert, and things of that nature. But there is no emission, no parking. Come on in and shop till you drop. Coming up next, Orion Township Parks and Rec is inviting runners and walkers of all ages to take part in the annual Dragon Dash 5K, which begins and ends at the Orion Center. For more information, visit orionparks.com. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. And I'm Lexi McKinney. Thanks for watching. Thank you.